Yes, your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of my two Satoshis. It is December 9th, 2019. Terry Higgins is at it again, people, with these off the cuff song requests. Pretty Woman from the soundtrack off the movie Pretty Woman. This guy, man, Terry Higgins, you, you crack me up, man. Appreciate the song request, though. Hope you guys are doing well today. Welcome to another episode. It is Monday. I know, Monday. Start of the week. Almost Christmas or holidays, whatever you celebrate that's all almost around the corner so something to look forward to hope you're ready to get into the swing of things this week well as far as crypto goes we're gonna be looking at uh some news out of china it looks like the pboc has used blockchain to issue 2.8 billion dollars worth of financial bonds we already know they're working on their own cryptocurrency so uh I'll, this piqued my interest i wanted to see what they were doing on the blockchain and what blockchain uh, if not their own proprietary one. So we're going to take a look at this article out of Cointelegraph regarding that. Also, we've got out of Bitcoinist.com, Weiss Rating Agency Group has downgraded EOS for centralization. Um, actually, not a huge fan of Weiss. They've made some questionable decisions on ratings in the past, but uh, it caught my attention and we're definitely going to look at <laughs> what their downgrade uh, is. Again, they've They've made some very questionable decisions on ratings in the past, not just on EOS, but on some other ones as well. But again, we'll take a look at this out of the Bitcoiners.com. And then lastly, Huawei out of nowhere shuts down its U.S. branch, gives crypto traders only seven weeks to withdraw all funds. Interesting take because they were pivoting and trying to follow how Binance, uh, the route Binance took. Uh, but it looks like they've... Uh, step back from that i don't you know i'm going to give you my two satoshis on this because i do have my theories as to why they decided to do a full 180 reversal on this move uh, but we'll get to that when we read this article but before we start if you guys find these types of videos informative make sure you like share and subscribe and click that bell to receive more videos like this got to give a shout out to eos locally great platform they have over there the first p2p eos trading platform actually Anytime, anywhere, you can trade EOS with your local currency. Anytime and anywhere, choose one of many online payment methods or meet in person for a cash transaction. Fully anonymous, no KYC. Check them out, EOSlocally.com. And also, Dudex.com, Fair Trading. Check those guys out. They've actually added a little bit more liquidity to the platform. Um, very easy to use platform. No more high transaction fees, no more price manipulation none of that over there they are a direct competitor to bitmex and their whole thing is that they're fair and transparent no rollbacks no trading against customers and all most importantly 24 7 customer service and no kyc so check them out dudex.com the link is in the description below let's take a look at this heat map all red today guys we got a clear rejection on bitcoin and we'll look at the details on that uh, shortly but a clear rejection at the 74 level we are below there now 7341 down three percent bitcoin is ethereum is down 2.3 percent to 148 dollars and 46 cents and then we've got eos down four percent to two dollars and 64 cents and litecoin down 2.88 percent to 44 dollars and 84 cents binance down only 1.5 percent to 15 dollars and 15 cents and uh xrp down 3.65 percent to 22 overall not not a good look today guys a red day to start the week and as i just stated you know we've got uh, another hard time here staying above this 74 77 level uh, simply not looking like uh, we're, we're able to sustain that at this point we had a big whiplash move here we tried to take out new uh, highs if you take a look at this area here we we did try to but the bulls failed and bears took back over and we did a clean reversal and back down below 7400 we go so at this point uh, you know if you could if I draw a trend line here like this essentially what we did was this trend line was broken back here okay it was initially broken back here on the 7th of december so that was a couple of days ago and so what we essentially did was we tried to get back above this trend line and, and failed right here we hit the back side of that trend line and pretty much failed okay so uh not too good of a look at this point point. and to be honest with you we've kind of been in a channel uh since all the way back on uh, november 21st of this year so if i draw 
the the peak in the trough which is essentially the 6500 area um, I could possibly draw even a tighter range here currently between 7900 and 7100 but this is where we've been a, a very tight range um, not too much going on since that big move downward that we saw back in early November so we'll just have to see what happens at this point but uh, definitely a break of the trend line and a, a basically a rejection of the trend line uh, attempt to breach upward that did not happen so at this point I think we're heading lower today guys and over the next couple of days so let's take a look at this Hawabi US operation shuts down gives crypto traders seven weeks to withdraw funds it says after migrating Wabi Global users to its U.S. based crypto exchange. Just last month, U.S. customers are once again sent packing. U.S. customers of the cryptocurrency exchange Wabi are getting the boot again. Over the weekend, the firm's U.S. exchange HBUS announced on its website that it will be shutting down, ceasing all operations, so that it can return to a more integrated and impactful fashion as part of its ongoing strategic layout. So services of the San Francisco based HBUS will cease on December 15th, though US customers will still be able to access their accounts until January 31st, 2020. Wabi US has asked that its clients withdraw all of their funds at this time. Prior to the move, HBUS's parent company, the Singapore based Hawabi Global, told its US customers just weeks ago that it would be freezing all assets belonging to US clients as a means of complying with regulators. Wabi Global at the time encouraged all US customers to transfer their accounts over to HBUS in order to continue utilizing Huawei's services. So it looks like the company gave its US clients until November 13th to withdraw funds, reflecting a change in the exchange's terms of services that made it so customers in the United States were no longer permitted to use the Singapore based exchange. So not not a good look. Um, and to be honest with you, they probably this is my two Satoshis on and, and my gut feeling on the whole situation. They probably saw how expensive and how many uh, loopholes and and all the red tape they would have to go through and just probably figured out that it probably isn't worth it. The U.S. competitive landscape is high because there aren't many um, players in this space as far as cryptocurrency exchanges. So, you know, the competition is very high. Um, and so, or I should say regulated, it's, it's probably, they saw that it was only a select few that could operate here. And so I think personally, they just said, Hey, we're not going to even spend any more money going after clients that are probably going to use Coinbase or Binance, right? Or Kraken, one of those. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me. You guys let me know if you were surprised at this move by Huawei, probably a smart move in my opinion. But uh, just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. Second article, Weiss ratings downgrades EOS for centralization. Weiss moved EOS down straight to C minus uh, network capable of faking activity hosts parasite tokens. It says the Weiss rating agency chart saw EOS slide down the ranks. Weiss downgraded the project, pointing centralization as the chief reason. Weiss ratings downgraded EOS from B to C minus, despite the favorable estimations in the past, the chief reason was the influence of big token holders, which could decide how to sway network resources. Uh, in a tweet, they said, we've had great respect for work and thinking that went into the EOS project, but the Weiss crypto rating agency is not based on opinion. It's driven by data and that data has now caused a downgrade from B to C minus. Here's a full article why and they give a link to that and some of these comments are hilarious one person said that uh how how about your shilling with cardano they were a huge cardano uh shiller you know and, that, and that's what i was meaning by you know i didn't understand i started to because they first came out out of nowhere said you know started doing their ratings and you know at first it was cool but then i started to see inconsistency so you like cardano but and, but you're saying that eos is centralized hmm so you're praising Cardano, which is not live, and it's very centralized. Only one node, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But then you want to say that a DPoS algorithm where you have 21 BPs that can be voted on uh, every two, two minutes, I believe, is a centralized situation. So that also means that you would have to give that same grade to, let's say, a Tezos 
or um, you know even like a Tron but again these um, ratings are just that their opinions and I, I really don't think they're doing their homework on this stuff so uh, interesting to see them make yet another inconsistent move there they go on to say here in their research that the network is capable of faking activity and hosting parasitic tokens the EOS is a network similar to older ones like BitShares as well as Steemit. Those networks have shown the influence of whales that can be immense and two nodes could even broadcast millions of free transactions. Other networks like Lisk showed that the election process for delegates ended up with voting power getting accrued in the hands of a few top delegates. All of them could vote each other into place without restoring to regular user vote and says that the coin has erased most of its gains for 2019 and according to blocktivity though the network carries more than 43 million transactions per day so this tweet says that as expected things will get better from here a bit fairer cpu pricing congestion will gradually die down as it's not dirt cheap to get cpu anymore everyone becomes a bit more vigilant fairer value for edos and yas and cpu It'll get better every day now when voice most of those now belonging to minting this EDOS or IDOS coin while other transactions are related to distributed app activity EOS has also seen accusations that most of the dApps are visited by bots faking the real usage statistics. OK, so I haven't seen any concrete evidence on that, but let's just say it was all fake bots. It still shows the capacity of the network. OK that's what people i don't understand here no one's using any of these uh blockchains so at least one blockchain could show that they have the bandwidth and capacity to handle 43 million transactions a day something that no other blockchain uh in the top 10 uh, that's even relevant can do so um uh, I'm, I'm gonna give that one a thumbs down and uh, actually like i said wise They've been on my uh, suspect list for quite some time. This is not the first. I've seen some ratings and tweets from them that were like, what? <laughs> uh, you guys let me know your thoughts about that. Really, the, the real rating you should be looking at is out of China. Ironically enough, the CCID's rating is, uh, is a more uh, objective list and rating system. Um, so if we start to see EOS drop on there, then I will, I will hold that with more weight than uh, this wise rating agency stick to doing equities and bonds wise rating agency last article out of China central bank uses blockchain to issue 2.8 billion worth of financial bonds it says here that the adoption rate of blockchain technology in China continues to impress as the People's Bank of China has reportedly issued 20 billion yuan or 2.8 billion in blockchain based special financial bonds for small and micro enterprises so it says according to local news outlet in earlier december the funds are specifically used to issue loans to these chinese small and micro sized companies to support their continued development in the economy it says as of the end of september the pboc issued around 404 billion yuan or 57.7 billion to 410 thousand small business and microeconomic enterprise customers representing an increase of 35 percent since a year ago as a reference micro enterprises generally have fewer than 10 employees while small companies have roughly 50 employees so it says the news comes as the chinese government is attaching an ever increasing level of importance to the digital economy earlier in december forecast insights took an in-depth comprehensive look and how blockchain technology is integrating in China. So the report pointed out that blockchain technology is rapidly maturing in China and has a slew of real world practical use cases that are far beyond the experimental stage. In November, Cointelegraph reported that China's blockchain development will see a compound annual growth of around 65.7% from 2018 all the way to 2023 and that the technology will exceed 2 billion by the end of 2023 so they're not playing games they're not playing games with blockchain they're not playing games with ai they're not playing games with 5g man you guys need to wake up china is definitely a contender here and you know western countries need to really uh start taking them more seriously or at least act like they're taking them more seriously by developing and being at the cutting edge of a lot of this stuff so that's pretty much it for today though ladies and gents should be a quick video see of red again for today bitcoin still down shout out again i guess to uh terry higgins out there on youtube for pretty woman 
off the Pretty Woman soundtrack. If you found this video informative, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and click that bell to receive more unbiased crypto news reported by yours truly, Crypto Blood. I'm out of here, people. Holla!